how so first of all here's the model as i understand it and y'all tell me if it's a little bit different but the Berkshire neighborhood got together and said look there's some dilapidated housing that's occurring in our neighborhood yes, that we're just not happy about that's yes, right and some of it um i understand there was even maybe a, a, a drug uh you know dealer in in one of the houses maybe maybe not so the neighborhood decides look we're going to raise the money to buy this house and then we're going to rebuild it and then when we rebuild it what we're going to do is we're going to sell it to somebody and we're going to keep the proceeds uh and then we're going to do that and we're going to do it again so you take those profits we're going to buy another house and we're going to rebuild it and we're going to do it again and what we're trying to do is raise the standard of housing in the neighborhood yes we're trying to create home ownership for individuals so that they can create some equity in the house themselves and at the same time the community association in order to continue doing this um keeps the profit and just kind of parlays that into another another, into another project. project so what made y'all get together to do this i mean that's kind of a big big hairy good. audacious just, goal just, just like you said before we saw the houses in the neighborhood was going down right and it didn't look good to the neighborhood sure sure so we want to help improve our neighborhood sure we live there not somebody else we live there and we want somebody else to be a part of what we have right well, I get that. I understand that. But, you know, a lot of people sit around and talk about it. Just talk about it. You know, abandoned, complain, complain. Abandoned homes or dilapidated homes or right. deteriorated homes bring down the value of your property. Yeah, Absolutely. So if this house is in a deteriorating condition and it's living and it's beside mine. Then it brings my house down. Mine. So we all get together because we generally used to have a monthly meeting. Right. So we get together and we, say we have to address this issue. And what we did was we found the first property and we found out it was sitting there abandoned for many years. Okay. At least 10 years. 10 okay. years. So we said, let's start with this one and see how far we could go. And we asked questions to get around till we find who the owner was. Mm -hmm. We reached out to the owner and, we, and the owner agreed to sell it. Now, when they said they're going to sell it, we did not have the money to buy it. Right. But we get together with the neighbors, myself, Mr. Hagan, Mr. Wiggins, all the people in the community. Right. And they contribute. Okay. Because the lady says she wants, what, 10,000 or whatever it is. Okay. Whatever and the we, number was doesn't really matter, right. but she didn't have it, so you had we to get it together. It, so yeah. we get it. We had to get it from so each once, other. Once we get it, and we purchase the home, we take care of the, all the expenses for it, then we decide to renovate it. Right. So that's where the renovation comes in. The sale of the property, the money that we receive from it, after paying off all the bills that we accumulate to take care of the property, right. we put it into 701. Yes. 701, that was another one down property sitting down there. You came by the I did. I yes. sure did. I was going to tell that story. Yes. And we knocked that down and we're getting ready to rebuild on it. Rebuild on 701. So, no. as I understand, too, the story, now, y'all tell me if I, if I don't have it wrong, but, I mean, folks were pulling out of their personal savings. People were, you know, taking, uh, you know, uh, money from their credit cards. They were from home equity lines. I'm talking about everybody in your community. That's how committed yes. each of you were as neighbors in the community that you were willing to do that out of your own pocket. Looking for no real return on this thing, no, other than your your value of your house and the quality of the neighborhood. Yes. yes. And what I mean by quality are, are, are neighbors that you know you you can share with their neighbors, right? Mm -hmm. By every definition. Yeah. And some of these houses were also boarded up. So yes. Yeah. So walk me through the journey. I mean, you just danced right on through that. <laughs> but I also know that the city um, was able to provide a grant of forty thousand yes. dollars to complete that first project. Yes. So I think that's the part of the story that nobody really fully understands, right? So you, people sit at City Hall, watch the meeting. Oh, my gosh, how come this neighborhood gets $40,000 to complete this project? Well, I want everybody to understand exactly the sacrifice, the challenges that you individually did and collectively did and got to that last place where you just couldn't complete the house. Mm -hmm. 
just couldn't complete it. So you're forty thousand dollars. You might as well have been a million dollars away mm-hmm. because that just makes a difference in completion of the house. Yes. And so, as I understand, uh, you know, Richard Joyner was a big proponent and help in that and assisting in that process. Sold it to council, um, but it was a good thing. So you got the forty thousand dollars. You're able to complete the house. Yes. And I was there for that second day, for that second house. And let me tell you what I saw. I saw a bunch of people that had a joy in their eye. They were smiles. There was this ownership of neighborhood. There was a pride in the neighborhood that was just so infectious. I didn't want to leave. I I didn't have long to stay. I only had about 30 minutes allocated. I think I may have stayed 45 minutes because I was enjoying the, 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 you know, the ambiance of all that. Okay. So how many houses do you have left in your neighborhood that you kind of targeted that you feel like that you need to, you know, to try to repair, if you will? I think there are about two more that's sitting there, but we can't do anything to it until we complete uh, 701 right. and get the proceed from 701 to move on because the city not going to give us all the money we need to do that. Right. But once we start it and we can present them with a viable option and some numbers, then when the next grant come around, sure. we'll get we'll get it and then we can proceed. Sure. But we have to do 701 first. Right. I got yes. you. So how far along are you in the completion? Now you bought it, you tore it down. It's, it yes. tore it down and we've got some bids in okay. to restore, okay. rebuild it. And what are the what are the bids looking like right now, if you don't mind sharing, just kind of in total dollars ish. I mean, I know that everything's changing, so Well, I think we heard of a bid that comes in at like two hundred thousand okay. dollars to put one up there. Sure. But what we were thinking of, if we accept that bid for two hundred dollars, we're gonna fall short in some areas. Right. Because the house in that area cannot be sold for two hundred dollars. Not yet, not yet. Not yet. But not when you complete, well, but seriously, when you complete <laughs> your project, that is but part of the benefit. Yes, right? you have to start. So I think we have one looking out for like a hundred and sixty-five. Okay. Which we figure we will be able to do that, mm-hmm. right? So right. That's the next project we're looking at. So I think um, we're working on getting that. Um, Bid confirm. Yeah. Sure, sure, point. sure. Yes. How many contractors have looked at this? One or two? or I think we have two so far. Okay, I got you. So you put out, I guess, an RFP yeah. asking mm-hmm. anybody who wanted to to bid. How long does somebody have in order to be able to put it, submit a bid to you? Uh, have you closed that up? Do you have a timeline which you're saying we're not going to take bids anymore? Not because not, I'm not involved in the bidding process, so I wouldn't know. Okay, fine, they, sure, I understand. But we'll we'll assume there's probably a timeline. But if it, you know if there are anybody that are listening, I wanted to make sure they, you know, if they could come in at less than one sixty nine, give you the product you wanted, that they at least had the opportunity to do that. Okay. So I don't I, I don't really think we are on such a timeline where we're gonna say okay, May first you cut off. Right. If, if if we have one up to May first and we still looking around and you come in with the sure. bid for less than what the last one was and you meet our needs. Sure. Then you be considered. Sure, sure. Right. So what I, if I wanted to bid on that, how do I do that? Who do I call? Is there a number that we can put up on the screen? We can call do the secretary. Call the secretary. Call, um Miss Joyner. Call Miss Joyner. And she will take it from there. Okay, yeah. so then she'll say, this is the plan that I'm looking for. Yes. Give us a bid, and mm-hmm. this is kind of where we are. And uh, yeah. no particular timeline, but when the group gets together and they make a decision, we'll, we'll inform you and mm-hmm. let you know. Mm-hmm. So now after you completed each house, how does that work? I mean, do I come in and say, hey, I want to buy this house at mm-hmm. a market rate? Or you guys already have a line of people that uh, are kind of in line for such a house? Uh, how does that process no. work? What what happened is we have a real estate guy. Right. Uh, more, sure. more real estate. Sure, sure. And we tell him what we're looking for. For for one thing, we don't want anybody to buy this property and said, I'm just gonna invest in it so we can rent it out and make mm-hmm. some money. No, That's not, not looking the for purpose. You, you want a owner we'll, occupy owner, owner occupied. Owner occupy. Right. Got to occupy it for at least ten years. Sure. Okay. So what we do is the 
the real estate is going to vet you. Mm -hmm. And the price you're going to get for get on the bid is at the reduced price to entice you to buy it and keep it. Okay. It's not going to be, let's say the property would be sold for 150. Sure. We sell it for 120. Sure. And for 120, these are the conditions you have to meet. I understand. Right. So that's the contract that occurs. Yes. With the community. And so I guess if I fail to abide by the contract, the community then has the opportunity to take the house back yes. or at least at least the additional proceeds. Uh, well, I guess the 30000 plus yes. whatever penalty there may be. Okay. So that, that's so what you're looking for is you're building a neighborhood, yes. not so much about building houses. Uh, there's a distinction on that, and yes. that's, a, that's a beautiful thing. So right now there's about 125 homes in Berkshire. Right. And of that 125, I think you have more than 30 homes that are rental property. Okay. Rent. Okay. And, and we're we, trying to get rid of them. We're trying to get rid of those rental Understand. property because the people who rent it, thanks to the city, they section eight. Right. And they tear the <coughs> building down. They tear the property up and they walk away from it. Right. Then they move to another one and tear it up. So we try to make sure that doesn't happen because, like I said, those property bring the value down in the neighborhood. Of course. And a home is the most expensive item that an individual can buy. Right. And it's there to appreciate so it can build wealth. Right. If you're not able to build wealth, ain't no point having it. So our job is to make sure that occurs because most of the people living in there now, they over 60. Most mm -hmm. of, okay. Most of us are over 60. Right. Most of I wouldn't have guessed that. Well, anyway. <laughs> most of us, was, I'm 77. Yeah, yeah, wow. Okay. So most of us <laughs> over 60. Sure. And I'm soon be 72. Congratulations. <laughs> so they understand what we're trying to do. And what happened in this neighborhood is that um, a lot of the older people either pass away or move away. Mm -hmm. The home is passed on to some relative, mm -hmm. but the relative also move away. Right. And they get the house rented and it's being torn down and nobody check it. So we find out who these people are. Right. And we reach out to them and we make them an offer. Okay. I say, this is how we're going to do it. And they will right. work with us. And I'm assuming you're using your realtor, realty for the realtor yes. for that. And yeah, also yeah. your secretary, they're, they're handling those things. Yes. And, yes, and so you're getting together as a community. And I guess that's how you set the priorities of which property you're trying to make a run at or all of them, I guess. Mm -hmm. By the way, 30% as a rental market within the neighborhood is pretty doggone good. Rocky Mountain as a whole has 62% of all houses are rental, 62%. So you're one of the you know, more one of the few neighborhoods with less than 50% of the total housing pool being rental. So mm -hmm. outstanding, just so you know. Mm -hmm. All right, so, um, and, you know, everybody talks about wealth building, right? This has really been uh, tallied as a wealth building mm -hmm. uh, initiative, and it does create wealth. But I think folks look at this uh, not understanding exactly what we're doing. What you're doing is you're creating equity in somebody's a home. Yes. Somebody's earning for that. They're paying for that. They're mm -hmm. creating that. And by virtue of building the neighborhood in a different way, you're creating appreciation in the sales price and the pr property value. So that way, collectively, the community wins on that. And the asset's still yours. Are there any conditions? Um, you know, if I buy the house and, you know, you know, I, I, you know, I pass away or I, I have to move away because I'm uh, in, in bad condition. Uh, what happens to the property at that point? Is there any contract with the community that you, you are able to buy that at some discounted rate? How does that work? It or is that just something we haven't addressed yet? We have not addressed that yet. Okay, yeah. fine. We have not addressed that yet because, like I said, most of the people living in there have been living in there for over 50 years. Right. And... The homes that are left unattended, those people move away. Right. And they move away before we even get there. Right. So we are not able to address those problems. But when those problems arise, we probably will find a way to address it. You know? 
Sure. By then we might have enough money that we can buy it outright from them. Sure. And let it land. Sure. That becomes an exit for yes. people if they so want it, and and yeah. then you deal with it. So I think one of the other questions that people have is. So you accumulate this money at the end of all of this, you've, you know, you've, you've completed your project. What happens to the money that's accumulated over that period of time? The money goes in the bank. Yes. You pay off the bills that you use to get this property. Of course. Up to spot. And then what is left, that is what set aside to move on to the next project. Sure. Nobody that's in the organization. The president, the vice president, nobody. Nobody collects. They nothing get the... anything from it. Okay. They're not salary positions. Sure. They're voluntary positions. So nobody gets any money out of it. Right. And that's why it's so well accepted by the community because they know nobody gets paid. We're sure. doing it because we have the energy to do it. We have the time to do it. Right. And we're going to get it done. And they're going to benefit from it. Sure. So. That's how that works. And I suppose at some point when the projects have weaned down to a small trickle, perhaps you're using that money for property upkeep or grass cutting yes, or whatever, yes. some sort of some sort of service along those service lines for the new yes, yes. Right, sure. Well, I think that's outstanding. So how would you advise other neighborhoods that want to go down this road? What would you tell them uh, from first, lessons learned? First of all, they got to get organized as a community. Right have monthly meetings so they can talk about what's going on in the community. Right. So if you're not organized and, no, and can't talk about it, then you can't do nothing. Right. So would you say that everybody in the community is on board with the project? Or are there any in dissenters? Our community? Up? Yes, sir. Oh, everybody's on board. Yeah, I would think you would almost have to have that to really make it everybody work. Everybody's on board because... um. When we started to look at this project, first thing we had to do, we had to um, become a 501c. Okay. And well, that costs a little bit of money too. Well, that came out of our pocket. Right. Because I did the paperwork for 501c um, between Reverend John, Mr. Hagan, Robin. We put up the money that need to go for the, five, for the articles of incorporation. Then we do the 501 and we pay for that. Okay. So the communities, all the communities need to know that before you can get into this, you have to be a 501c3. Right. That way you can get the grant from the city. I was going to say the city can't give money to an individual yes. that way. They can give it to an organization, organization that's not profit. Yes. That's serving the public interest. Yes. Even, then, even then it has to be a very specific, narrow Spe focus. Yes, sir. So that's all that is. So. I'll tell all the communities, and if they don't have the with all to do the five hundred one c three, they don't. Have, they can come and see us, right? Because I, I still have documents that I have that I can share with them, so they can just get copy of it and send it up. But you must have that five hundred one c, right? You know. So you start there with the 501C. You start with agreement of the neighborhood. And mm, yes. Do you have some sort of charter? I mean, you guys, I know, do. Yes. But is Balance. it written down? We got our no. bylaws. Yes. Bylaws. And and y'all negotiated that over a, a period of time, I assume. Everybody agreed on them. Yes. And that's no small task either to get everybody to agree on those we, types of items. What we did, we, we created a bylaw and we passed it around to all the neighbors. Right. Tell them to read it. They have any objection. Any addition or deletion at the next meeting, bring it to us and we can go over it and make the changes. And they did that. So what, was there a lot of changes that needed no, to be made? No, I couldn't no. imagine. I mean, it sounds like y'all were in no. agreement. So it what was you just wanted a simple bylaws. Right. And it, it, it just concentrated itself on not so much what John Brown might be doing. Right. Is how John Brown do it. Right. For example, one of the things is, Abandoned cars. Right. It, it cannot sit here more than such a lot of time. Right. We'll, the city, we agree with the city. If if it's there, we'll notify the city. They come and remove it. Right. I'll give you a notice. They come and remove it. Dogs. No dogs supposed to be run loose in the neighborhood. Right. Things of that nature. The only thing we try to get now that we have a problem with is speeding motorists. Okay. And that's a DOD DOT problem. Sure. We got to get them to how to put up. Because the speed, speed limit is 
35. I don't think the speed limit should be 35 in that neighborhood. Right. But that's what they have. So if you go keep it at 35, I might need some speed bumps sure. in certain places. Or something to, to reduce slow the them speed. down. Sure. Yes. Mm -hmm. But apart because the old ladies, they come to their mailbox. They have right. to come pick up their mail. Right. And you speeding down and you get out of control. Mm -hmm. Right. No, no, I understand. It's not safe. No. Right. And you're right. I've been in that neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can't, I'm, I'm not even sure I can get up to 35 miles an hour in some places. <laughs> oh, they I mean, do it. I'm sure they do. Yeah. But so what you did, in essence, you created a homeowners association without really a formal association. You you just came up with a contract. So we agree. This is how we're going to operate. Mm -hmm. This is uh, I'm going to do my part. You do your part. And we're going to enforce this or ask those who can't enforce it to do so. Mm -hmm. And in that way, created uh, some standards. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's a wonderful thing. So then after you've done that, now... Now I've got to go about the business of trying to figure out how to raise the money, you know, and, you know, one of the things that made it so easy on the Berkshire community is that you guys had raised so much money on your own and embarked on it so far down the road that it became a, well, we're just helping, you know, okay. a group that's already there versus somebody saying, okay, I form a not-for-profit, give me my money, mm. you know, which is always a temptation. But but the, it was easier to buy into a project where people had already bought into it and were committed and moving in the same direction uh, toward a, a, an avenue of prosperity for everybody, really, and building a community. So, so then it's about raising the money and then deciding on which house is going to be first. Okay. So how would you do that? I mean, some of these, some neighborhoods don't have the advantage that Berkshire does. You've got basically one entrance and exit, which allows mm -hmm. some control over the neighborhood, different than a lot of places. Um, and I guess you guys could decide based on which house is available. It sounds like you had some houses down, but it wasn't like every other house. Mm -hmm. So how would you advise just folks, you know, those are practical issues that, you know, that you've gone down the road of, but you, how would you advise somebody? Take a look at the houses that's in the community right. and see what condition those houses are in, mm -hmm. and what if they if we got one, a house that needs some more work than another, we need to check and see which which one we available got the resources sure. to take care of. Right. Sorry, what you can afford. We don't want to bite off more than we can chew. You know what? That, that is wisdom in that statement of levels that I don't think a whole lot of people get. But, you know, <laughs> you, you, if you're a dollar short, you might as well be a million dollars short, you know? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what other advice would you provide? I think that's outstanding. Let's, let's make sure you have dedicated people at the end. Right. For example, you President, your vice president, your secretary, your treasurer. Right. Make sure those people are hundred percent on board. Sure. And because they can make things work. Like Robin, she's a treasurer. They make things work. And you can always go to them. They are they are accessible to right. everybody. Right. And the president is accessible. I'm accessible. Sure. So whatever you have, whatever problem you have or concerns you have, you come to us. Right. And we can address it. Mm -hmm. Right. We might not can address it right here and then, but we'll tell you, we'll look into it and we'll address it. And we get together and we come up with a plan for it. Sure. And um that's all you have to do it in the neighborhoods. So how much time are you guys spend on this? I know it's a lot Any more. Time? How much time per week, hours? I mean, mm -hmm. I'll, if I had to guess, it sounds like a 20-hour week <laughs> job to me. It may be more, maybe less, but it feels like a lot. You know, we don't even look at the time. No, right. We because don't even think I'm about retired, the time. Right. So I don't look at the time. Right. I pick up the phone and Reverend Higgins called me and yeah. said, hey, can we do this? Yes. When you want us to do it? Mm -hmm. Tomorrow. And I think that's part of the message, too. I got to love it so much and have a time to commit to it to make mm -hmm. it happen. Yes, sir. You have to love your neighborhood. Right. Because if you don't love your neighborhood, it's going to fall. Right. Right. Okay. I live at the first house as a journey to Berkshire. Okay. And I wonder when everybody passed my house, it's looking good to them. Right. So I want when I pass your house, 
it got to be looking good. Right. I don't want to see the grass growing up. So if the grass is growing on the chicken and you're 95 year old and you can't do it, right? we get somebody to do it for you. Sure. That's well, that's what community does. Yeah, so that's, that's, do that's, that's being neighborly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, gentlemen, I want to thank you for coming and describing what you've done. I tell you what, I think it's a brilliant thing. I am glad that y'all took the initiative. I think this could serve as a model for many, many, many communities in town and other places. Maybe not 100%, but, you know, with the dedication that you guys have exhibited and are demonstrating, clearly it's working. And, you know, my hat's off to you. Thank you for all that you do for Rocky Mountain. And thank you for what you're doing in Berkshire. And thanks to City of Rocky Mountain for helping. Well, we couldn't have achieved what we have achieved so far without the help of the City of Rocky Mountain with the grants they give. Right. And um, we look forward to continue our relationship with the City of Rocky Mountain and press forward. We can press forward some more. We're trying to eradicate all the rental properties as much as we can. Yes. But to do that, we're going to need some money along the way. Sure. So if this house come, because some of the people, like I said, they're not living in Rocky Mountain. They're not even living in North Carolina. They're out of town. Right. But if we get a hold of them and we say, hey, look, your property is in a bad condition and the tenants are tearing it up, we'll give you a dollar for it. And they say, give me two dollars. Mm-hmm. I say, okay, we're going to give you two dollars. Right. They say, you have it. So that's one more of the market. Sure. The rental market. And that's what we're working on. Guys, thank y'all so much. I appreciate you being here. I think we're out of time, but it's been an absolute delight. And I look forward to many more conversations as we go forward. Thank you. Thank you very much for having us. Yeah. And, um, we'll be around as long as we'll be a mayor. There we'll you continue go. to do this. And we can keep, <laughs> keep the neighborhood moving forward. Well, thank you, sir. 